After taking another small hiatus due to traveling for work purposes and also being a little under the weather, I finally got back to a Devils game as a credentialed media member as they took on the Arizona Coyotes, and they made me sick once again. We have a lot to break down in today's episode of Locked on Devils and hear from some of the players and interim head coach Travis Green. Most of this episode was, in fact, recorded at Mullet Arena, but I had some technical difficulties three quarters of the way through the episode. Buckle up, everybody. You're Locked on Devils, your daily podcast on the New Jersey Devils, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hi, this is Bryce Salvador, and you're Locked on Devils. All righty now, what is up, New Jersey? Welcome back to the Locked On Devils podcast here on Locked On Network. I'm your host, Kyle Chalky, play play announcer, Devils Rider for Pucks and Pitchforks, and also part time credential media member Trey Matthews here at Mullet Arena on the campus of Arizona State University, where the New Jersey Devils suffered another loss this season to the Arizona Coyotes, this time losing in regulation by a score of 4-1. to one. And this game went from bad to worse to putrid to pitiful. And honestly, I think that kind of sums up the Devils' season because going into this matchup, the Coyotes in their past seven games – only had two wins, and both of them came at the hands of the Detroit Red Wings. And the Devils, once again, they're being given a huge mulligan when the Red Wings are struggling, when the Islanders lose one of their more recent matchups, and the Devils could just not gain that traction in the wild card. And I'll talk more about that in the third and final segment. What's on tabs for today's episode? Well, I will share some of my main takeaways from the game in the first segment. Then in the second segment, we will hear from Curtis Lazar, who set a new career high in points and also interim head coach Travis Green and his thoughts on the Devils' quote-unquote immaturity and also what they need to work on on the power play. And then in the third and final segment, like I do with every post-game recap, I will compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade. Like I mentioned, this game is supposed to be a quote-unquote winnable game for the Devils because while the Devils haven't been good this season, the Coyotes haven't been any better. In fact, they went on that, what, like that lengthy 10-plus game losing streak not too long ago. I literally just said in their past seven games, their only two wins came against the Detroit Red Wings, and the Devils were just given a gift. And once again, their inconsistent nature shows, and it was a complete 360 as to what they did against the Dallas Stars when a lot of their depth assets, a lot of their underrated assets really came to play. And it's just frustrating when they can get no consistency their way. To begin this game, It, like I said, it wasn't really all the best of starts because Curtis Lazar, he blocked a shot with his lower body and had to be helped down the tunnel by trainers. Never a good sign, but we all know that Curtis Lazar is a tough customer and he returned to his usual PK shift. If Speaking of which, Devils went to the PK early thanks to an Eric Holla trip call. They type rope out of it, but after the first media timeout, it seemed like the Devils started to get on the right track they got a couple more shots on the board because they only had one single shot throughout the the first seven minutes of the game but like it's gone all season long the devils gave up the first goal of the game jj moser he fired it past kakinen and get this the devils are now nine games shy of tying the nhl record for letting up the most first goals in a season and always a game of catch up with this unit. And it's their lazy stick work that sometimes is the culprit. That's why sometimes you see them going to the penalty box. Sometimes that's why you see them not really executing all that well. Talk more about that in the second segment. But it, it just was a downward spiral. And then Tomas Nosek, speaking of lazy stick work, he has to serve a penalty. And Dylan Gunther, he capitalized on the man advantage. And Devils are now down 2 nothing early. And then you're just when you think it couldn't get any worse, Nick DeSimone, who has been pretty good for the Devils in the games that he has suited up in, especially in that game against the Dallas Stars matchup. I will give him his roses, but he had a really bad play that was exposed as a result. The rookie, Logan Cooley, he fired it on past Kakanen, and that made it a 3 to nothing game. Another example in which the Devils' defense got heavily exposed, and it doesn't take that much to find some holes in their execution. I was actually talking to Chico Resch about this in between intermissions, and Chico, as always, provided his perspective, saying that 
when you look at the replay, D. Simone, he was sort of like a deer in headlights. He was looking at the boards. He wasn't really looking at who was in front of him. He wasn't really aware of his surroundings, and that's something he's going to have to develop. He's not a rookie or anything. He has some NHL experience, but obviously not as much as the next guy in line. But that's just something he's going to have to work on, especially if he wants to see more consistent playing time. And obviously that was just like a snowball effect for Devils. And that's just been the case all year. When one thing goes wrong, it seems like 10 other things just follow suit. And once the Devils put themselves into that hole, they just cannot climb out of it. Despite the Devils and Coyotes being even in the shots on goal category, 15 a pop, the Coyotes, you could just tell, were dominating the Devils and they had no fear going up against this New Jersey unit. I had the chance to ask D. Simone post game about that play in particular. Did he feel like he redeemed himself? Because the thing is, Nick D. Simone did score the only goal of the game for the Devils, thanks to a great feed from Colonel Cesar out in front and Jack Hughes setting up. Here's what he had to say. How did it feel to uh, sort of redeem yourself after what happened uh, on the Logan Cooley goal to now scoring your own goal uh, for this team? Yeah, I mean, just try to try to help win games and. Um, obviously overshadowed by you know a bad play by me so um, yeah we didn't win so it doesn't matter I can understand the frustrations but there was actually some significance with that goal because that was Nick D. Simone's first goal as a member of the Devils and after that assist Curtis Lazar actually set a new career high in points and remember Curtis Lazar when he first got to the Devils he described his game as meat and potatoes hockey. Don't expect too much. But ever since he joined New Jersey, his offense has definitely taken a few steps forward. I know this game was putrid. I know it was ugly to watch, but I don't want people to forget the significance of that Nick Simone goal because that's his first career goal as a devil. And Curtis Lazar, new career high in points. Definitely got to give them their props in that regards. But once again, in the second period, uh, Travis Green tried everything he could do to try to um, shake things up. And in, in fact, he he took out Kapo Kakinen from the game and he put in Nico Dawes. Nico Dawes shut down the door and we spoke to him post game and he felt like he did everything he could possibly do. And Curtis Lazar even said that they felt like that they left uh, Kakinen very exposed and they didn't really help him. And he's absolutely right because the second period, it was just a – even though Nick DeSimone scored, it wasn't really a good all-in-all -all outing. The Devils have to try to find a way to play the full 60 because they don't have many points to play with. And if I had to highlight a main area of concern for the Devils in this game, here are my two takeaways. I would say it's their passing because if you notice on the power play, sometimes the Devils either overpass it or their passes are just not there. Even at even strength, it just seems like they cannot make those tape-to-tape -tape passes. And I even noticed it as the game waned on, and I even put it out on social media. And then the second thing is, is their inability to finish shooting the puck and trying to capitalize on their opportunities because James Nichols of New Jersey Hockey Now, he put this out on social media, the deserve to win meter it fell heavily into the devil's favor because the chances were right there. But Vegmelka was just very good in between the pipes. Like if I had to choose my star of the game, it would definitely be Veggie for the Coyotes. He was phenomenal in between the pipes, but that's still not an excuse. And I was even talking to Matt Loglin and Chico Resch about this pregame, which is I think it's going to come down to the goaltending for the Coyotes if they want to come out victorious. And that's exactly what happened. It's uh, it's inexcusable that the Devils get that many shots off and it only results in one single goal. And that tells me that you're not finishing on the chances that are presented to you because I remember there was a particular play in which Eric Halla set up Brendan Smith point blank shot attempt. That was a good look. Unfortunately, Brendan Smith could not finish or Jack Hughes. Sometimes he got shut down physicality I don't I don't even know it's just like as the game progressed it just seemed like the Devils just got into their own way when it came to finishing and I think that's just my main takeaway which is they need to work on their passing and they need to work on their finishing inabilities so that's what I noticed as the second period waned on and into the third period because nothing big really happened aside from uh, Josh Brown and Curtis McDermott going toe to toe. This game was just an absolute stinker for the Devils. And it seemed like in the third period, they were just going through the motions. And towards the end of it, I, I don't know about you, but it just seemed like that they gave up on themselves because they knew that they weren't going to amount the comeback. And then the Coyotes, they get, they get the empty netter goal. It's all she wrote. 
basically this this game was just a bad start and it's just one of those examples where you can't trail the entirety of the game and expect to come out victorious and try to make a miraculous comeback because sooner or later it's going to come back to bite you we're going to hear from travis green and curtis lazar momentarily but before we continue let me tell you guys about sleeper regardless of where the devils are at in the standings, I want to remind you that you can win big by playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy app of Locked On NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for our daily fantasy sports and especially daily fantasy hockey because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. And all you have to do is pick whether studs like Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Nico Keisher, Nico Dawes will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus, minus, and more in any given game. To win a 100 times bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me, Devils fans. You can win 100 times your money playing daily fantasy hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. Use the promo code Locked On NHL and you'll get a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. Okay, let's look at the bigger picture for the Devils. Like I just said, they are nine games away from tying the NHL record for letting up the first goal in a matchup. They have done it so many times. I have lost track. It seems like it's always one to nothing, and we always see the jokes on social media, one to nothing them. They need to get off to better starts if they want any chance to reach the playoffs, which are which is very unlikely at this point. Let me just make it clear, but it's not – 0% chance, but it's not a likely chance. Let's just leave it at that. But anyway, Curtis Lazar spoke to the media post game about the Devils' execution, what they need to work on, and the slow starts that this team sometimes face. Here's what he had to say. It's not the result you wanted the first period. It seems the people that got away from you guys didn't take any souls in the way you guys battled back in second period, or there's just no more of a at this point? The yes and no. Like I said, we played well for, if you're a gamer, I said we played well for 48 minutes, but that's not cut it in this league. It's points we got to have. Um, we got to dig in and want it. It um, doesn't matter what time the game is. We got to be ready to go. Um, just not good enough. I, again, this whole season, we've had a hard time building momentum and getting wins together. And again, tonight was another prime example of that. What has been the issue with the starts this whole season long? Couldn't tell you. Uh, again, you know, we, we played pretty solid in Dallas, and you know what I think got us their success there was you know our work ethic, the way we played. Um, I didn't think that we were going to take the skill side away from it. Yeah, we, we put up a lot of goals there, but you got to be able to work. It doesn't matter what kind of game it is. You got to be ready to play um, to dig in um, and just do whatever it takes to to succeed and really you know find a way. And again, we weren't able to do that. Again, if we woke up, they made it through the first, but too little, too late. What about the play of Nico Dawes coming in there? I was just saying the door, gave you guys that opportunity in the second third. Yeah, he, he was great for us. Uh, again, we we pushed. Again, when you get down, you got sometimes cheat for the offense a little bit. But you know, he, he was a rock back there. But again, was, I feel bad for Topo. You know, we, we hung him out to dry a little bit there to start, and that's no way to treat a goalie. Curtis, you set a new career high in points. What's been changing your offensive approach? Not much. Sure. I just want to win. That's about it. I love Curtis Lazar and all, and I'm glad that he still answered my question. And actually, fun fact for you guys, uh, I cut off the camera at this point. But uh, when we were done speaking to Curtis, he actually came up and apologized to me because he felt like he was a little rude to me when I asked him about his career high because I was just trying to give him his roses because it's still a good – uh, achievement to do, which is get a career high in something despite the loss. But I just wanted to give him his congratulations. And he just said, like, I, I understand. Uh, and he apologized. But anyway, going back on track, what Curtis Lazar said during his soundbite is that sometimes it comes down to execution and the determination from his team. Here's the thing, like you guys are in a unique situation, which is despite the coaching change, despite uh, essentially being sellers at the deadline, despite all the inconsistencies, the Devils still could hypothetically make the playoffs, but they need to start racking up more wins consistently because the most amount of games that they've won in a row is three, and that's not going to get it done. Once again, I want to see the Devils possibly make the playoffs and shock the NHL world. I think they're capable of doing it, but they got to show me it. That's why I'm not really saying like the Devils can still do it because they haven't shown me that they can do it. And when you talk about like work ethic, when you talk about determination, well, here's some determination for you, which is you guys are still in this. You're not out of it. And yet you're still not really coming out 
100% guns blazing. I get that the time differential can definitely mess you up a little bit. I don't care what anyone says. Trust me, traveling does take a toll on you, but it's not an excuse. You really got to try to uh, work on that a little bit more. And that I don't know what, what other motivation I could potentially give the Devils, which is you can still make the playoffs. You're not out of it. But you got to string up those wins, especially against the Coyotes. Losing these types of games are going to kill you in the long run. Because I said at the beginning of the episode, this is the second time this season that the Devils lost to the Coyotes. The first time the Devils played the Coyotes was second game of the year. They lost an OT. They walked away with the point. I'll give them that. But only getting one out of potential four points against the Coyotes, a team that went on a 10-plus game losing streak, unacceptable losing to the San Jose Sharks losing to the Anaheim uh, Ducks losing to the Montreal Canadiens losing to the Columbus Blue Jackets lots of points left on the board which is not acceptable I don't know what else needs to be motivated for this Devils team and now you got to go up against the reigning Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights who are cheating the system even though it's legal let's just say because they, they are stacked I don't know how they wiggle this financial room but anyway Moving on, it's just a little frustrating that you talk about motivation, you talk about determination, will, whatever the case might be. Okay, I get that, and I love Curtis Lazar and all, but there's your motivation right there. And now, here's what Travis Green had to say post game about the immaturity from the Devils. We've talked about the lack of consistency all season. Yeah. Why do you think, again, you guys weren't ready from the get-go? Well, I think a bit of it is immaturity. Um, you know, it's, it's a tough league to win it. You have to be ready to go every night, and uh, you know, if you don't start on time, it's it's a hard league to win consistently. I don't know what everyone's opinion on the matter is, but he is right, which is it is very immature for the Devils to basically just be playing the way that they are. Because, like I said, there's so much on the line. There's so much uh, that the Devils can be playing for. They can still be a playoff team. Are they going to get past the first round? I would bet my bottom dollar that the answer would be no. And like I said, I want to believe, but I'm very skeptic. And I think this season is more or less done. And I think they should just focus on the summer and what's to come next season. But anyway, until they get a 0% chance, you can still make it, but you're not making it, uh, it, it any easier on yourself when you're losing to the Arizona Coyotes, especially when you have one of the toughest schedules in the entire NHL. I believe the Devils either have the fifth, sixth, or seventh toughest schedule in the NHL to close out the season. But And keep in mind, they still have not faced the Toronto Maple Leafs at all this year, and they got to play them three times. That's not going to be easy. Do you want to rack up three L's for those matchups? I'm just putting that out there. Which, but it, it just comes down to the fact that the Devils, they brought in more veteran players last season and including this offseason. But why is it not like carrying over from last year? That's my thing, which is you brought in these veteran pieces to try to help uh, grow the Devils a little bit more, and it's still not working. That's why I love Tyler DeFoley on the roster, even though he's now with Winnipeg, is because he has that championship pedigree. Andre Palat, he has that championship pedigree. That's why you bring in those veteran-type players to hold down the fort, and you have a player in the locker room that has championship pedigree. I'm just going to put that out there. Jack Hughes, Jesper Bratt, Nico Heischer, all of them have playoff experience. They know what it takes to get to the playoffs now. I don't want to hear the excuse saying that the Devils are just a young team. They're going to develop. They're going to grow. No, no, no. Screw that. They should know how to compete now and get to the playoffs. But I get where uh, Travis Green is coming from. And I also asked Travis Green what needs to change on the power play because here's a fun fact for you guys, and this goes out to all of my Dougie Hamilton haters. Do you want to know what the power play numbers are for the Devils ever since uh, Dougie went down with his injury? Well, according to Ryan Ovazinski, the Devils own the worst power play percentage since November 28th, Dougie Hamilton's last game. They're converting at a 14.5% clip. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I know Dougie Hamilton is not the sole reason why the Devils power play is crashing and burning and sputtering and, and just disintegrating into the ground, but he does play an important factor. You, you cannot deny that. And I asked Travis Green, what needs to change on the power play? Here's his answer. In your opinion, what needs to change on the power play? Oh, we've got to keep working on it. Um, again, we, we, I think it was the second game. Last game, we didn't have anyone. First time that we had Mercer on that unit try to get a right shot. But it's not a secret formula to score either on the power play, but we'll keep working. And they are.
um, okay, uh, you put Dawson Mercer at the right and you're trying to say like you're trying to generate more shots. Oh, okay, but it's just like, uh, what's going to change? Are you just going to swap out Dawson Mercer for something for someone else and it's just going to be more or less the same thing? Ah. My thing is like it, it just comes down to passing. It comes down to the finishing abilities because it just seems like the big thing for the Devils, they either overpass it or their passes are just not connecting. I think that's the big thing on the power play. And just Oh, boy. Don't you hate it when your microphone's battery dies on you and you don't realize it until you get back into your normal studio? Sorry for the jump cut if you're watching on YouTube, but unfortunately nothing I could do with technical difficulties during the editing process. But anyway, the point I was just trying to make is that I don't think it's just the power play passing that's been uh, somewhat subpar for the Devils. I think it's also their five-on-five. That's basically the point I made while I was filming my episode at Mullet Arena. Now, before I compare the stats and give the Devils a letter grade, let me tell you guys about eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level up to peak performance. From superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more, whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back. Because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, let's compare the stats, give the Devils a letter grade, and get out of here once again. And this is the second time that I am recording this. Shots on goal differential, 38-32 to 32 in favor of the Devils. Astonishingly, they get 38 shots on the Coyotes, and yet they only get one goal. Whereas the Coyotes get 32 shots on the Devils, and they get four goals. Face-off percentage, 57.1% to the Devils, 42.9% to the Coyotes. Power play, Devils were 0 for 2. Coyotes were 1 for 2. Penalty minutes tied uh, 9 apiece. Hits 25 to 11 in favor of the Devils. Block shots 22 to 15 in favor of the Coyotes. Giveaways, Coyotes led that department 8 to 6. Takeaways 4 to 2 in favor of the Coyotes. And I, if I had to give the Devils a letter grade, I'm going to have to give them an F because this was just inexcusable. For them to have the performance that they had against this Coyotes team that has struggled second half of the year after the all-star break. And you got to go up against the reigning Stanley Cup champion Vegas Golden Knights. And it seems like the last time the Devils won two straight games, you would have to go back to mid-February. The only thing that's been consistent about this team is their inconsistency. And I really want to believe in them. I really do. But they still need to show me something. Because I'm not going to jump on the bandwagon and say, yeah, Devils could still make the playoffs. They could do this. They could do this. Well, theoretically, yes, they can. But theoretically, I could become a doctor. But does that mean I'm going to become one? No. So I, I don't know if that was a good example or not. But you get the point, which is if you actually want something to come into fruition, you got to go out there and perform. And dropping games against Coyotes, that's not going to get it done. Let me know what you guys think. If you're watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below. If you're listening on a podcast streaming service, hit me up on my personal X page app at TreyMat4 or the show's X page app at Locked On Devils. As for this episode, that's all the time I have for you. So continue to stay safe. Have a wonderful day, New Jersey. Go Devils. I'll catch you guys in the next episode. Second time that I'm filming the ending, but technical difficulties, nothing I could do. Trey Matthews signing out from Mullet Arena slash my normal studio recording area. And I actually have a flight to catch to Vegas within the next uh, few hours when this episode goes live. So if you see me at T-Mobile Arena, don't be afraid to come up and say hi. Love meeting new people. I will see you guys in Sin City.